Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now, in today's part 53, we are still talking about the Riemann integral. And here I want to tell you about some important properties this integral has. Here, please recall that for a general bounded function defined on the interval AB, we defined the notion that f is Riemann integrable. Then, exactly for such functions, the Riemann integral makes sense. And now we can collect all these functions in a set and call this set RAB. So this is simply the space of all Riemann integrable functions. In fact, if you know what an abstract vector space is, it's not hard to show that RAB is also a vector space. This is related to the first property about which I want to tell you today. Indeed, you might remember that we already talked about the properties of the Riemann integral for step functions. Now it turns out that we can generalize all these properties to general Riemann integrable functions. More concretely, this means that we look at the map that takes a function as an input and the output is given by its integral, which is by definition a well-defined real number. And then the important property here is that this map is linear and monotonic. More precisely, here linear means for the integral that we can pull out the addition and scalar multiplications. And monotonic just means if we have two functions where one of them is always larger than the other one, then also the integral of this one is larger than the other one. In the case you don't know this anymore, please rewatch part 50. There we have proven both properties here for step functions. In fact, since we approximate Riemann integrable functions by step functions, these properties immediately translate to this general case here. Therefore, this is just a short proof you can do for yourself. Okay, now I want to talk about another property, but first we have to do some small definitions. Now, maybe you have seen this before, but often, instead of the boundary points of the interval, some other limits for the integral are chosen. Then you see something like this, the integral from c to d of the function f. Of course, in the case that c is less than d, this is not hard to interpret. We simply have a new domain where we define the integral. Or if we look at the graph of the function here, you would say we are only interested in the area here. This means that we forget what the function does outside of this new domain. Therefore, you can just define this new integral by using the restriction. Now you see here on the right hand side, we actually have the function f restricted to cd where the domain fits. However, you see, this is just a formal explanation why we are allowed to use smaller domains. In the end, I think you don't see any problems using this new symbol immediately. Indeed, it just explains itself. However, by having different limits on the integral sign now, we can talk about property 2. There, we just need one intermediate point C from the interval AB. So if we look at the picture again, we just have one point somewhere in the middle here. And there you see, this single point can split the whole area we have into two parts. Or to say it more formally, the one integral can be written as the sum of two integrals. Hence, the integral from a to b is equal to the integral from a to c plus the integral from c to b. So you see, this is a very nice and useful property and I can tell you it follows immediately from the definition. You see this when you consider step functions where you just have to split a rectangle. Which is for calculating the area, of course, no problem at all. Okay, now it might not surprise you that we can generalize all these formulas here also for functions f that are defined on the whole real number line. However, in the same sense as before, we are still only interested in the case that the integration is over a compact interval. Hence, with this restriction in mind, all the integration symbols also make sense when f has the whole real number line as its domain. 
But then, in this case, in the last formula here, our C could be bigger than the chosen B. However, at the moment, then the formula does not make any sense. Because the lower limit of the integration would be bigger than the upper limit. Therefore, this is the next thing we need to define now. In other words, what does it mean when the order on the integration sign is the wrong way? There we just have an easy fix, we introduce a minus sign. So we fix the order and put a minus sign in front. In fact, you could read this that the x-axis has an orientation. This means, if we go from right to left, the areas we would add, which should be positive in this example, are now negative. So you see, this is a nice definition, which makes this formula even more general. More precisely, this means that for a function f that is defined on the whole real number line, you can take any c here. Okay. Then I would say, let's close this video with the last property. In fact, here I want to tell you that a lot of functions are Riemann integrable. Not all functions as we have seen, but still we find a lot. And most importantly, all continuous functions are Riemann integrable. This implication here is something you really should remember, because often we deal with continuous functions. In fact, the converse here is not correct. So we have some functions that are not continuous, but they are still Riemann integrable. For example, if we have a function defined on AB that is monotonically increasing, then we know it's also Riemann integrable. So you see, this is another sufficient condition we have here. And of course, the same implication holds here when we have a monotonically decreasing function. Now, proving both facts here is not the easiest task, but still a good exercise. Maybe we will talk about this proof in another video. However, before we do this, I want to use the next videos to tell you about the connection between integration and differentiation. This is very interesting and indeed the most important result in this whole course. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.